James, the use of drag queen to kick off the <laughs> London campaign to get expats there uh, to vote yes. Mm. Uh, yeah, maybe, I don't know, it's uh, inclusive, it's a nice touch, or do you think it may be not quite what you'd want for such an important topic? Andrew, nothing says we understand Indigenous culture like a drag queen wearing an Aboriginal flag <laughs> as a cape, butchering a John Farnham hit. I mean, uh, honestly, if this is the I way say, we're oh, going on, to... Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I thought he did a pretty good job. Oh, it was terrible. It was absolutely disgusting the way he just ruined that song. But, I mean, if this is the way we're going to start public events from now on, give me welcome to country every day of the week, Andrew. <laughs> Honestly, it feels like we're in some parallel universe. Which bureaucrat thought that would be a good idea? I'd love to know what Indigenous elders think about that. But the, the, it, it, it demonstrates what many of us are afraid may be a result of the voice, and that is this amplification of identity politics. Yeah, look, uh, no, that, that is a point. Evelyn, what did you make of it? Look, I think they're really touching on some very serious Indigenous issues right now. But in all seriousness, I think it's incredibly insulting to their target audience. We can't win you over with well-reasoned arguments, so we'll play the jingle and we'll send in the entertainment. I mean, it's no small thing when you change a constitution, but they're going to reduce the debate to a drag queen stunt. It's bottom of the barrel stuff. It reeks of desperation. But then again, when the show is failing, you send in the clowns. <laughs> oh, guys, you really seem to have prepared some zingers for us tonight. <laughs> I have to say, just confirmed this is about identity politics and it's a feel-good of the left. I didn't see any attempt to reach out to no voters there, more conservative uh, Australians. Uh, quite arrogant, I thought. Uh, the latest tactic of the Yes campaign is a warning by a Labor minister, Murray Watt, that very evil far-right influences are infiltrating the campaign against an Indigenous voice to Parliament. So it seems now both sides really, I mean, it's true, both sides really are claiming the other's the nasty side, that's where the nasties are. In this competition, James, who wins? Well, it's funny, you know, I mean, the, the Yes campaign have tried calling their opponents racists, then they tried calling them stupid, mm. and now uh, we've learned what's even worse than a racist or a stupid person, it's a right-winger. But uh, no-one is convinced by any of this. I mean, if anything, it demonstrates the problem with the referendum, and that is that we were promised it would bring Australians together. So pointing out who's the nastiest of which side only serves to demonstrate that Anthony Albanese has completely failed to bring the country together. It's just more division. Evelyn, it does seem to be uh, such a divisive campaign, doesn't it? It really does. You'll have to excuse me while I yawn here because it just seems to be the only way that people can engage in political discourse in 2023. Claim everyone that you don't agree with is far right and it's incredibly tiresome. I think the biggest problem though is unfortunately people on our side tend to care a little bit too much about the names that we're being called. You know, the accusation of far right is continually thrown around because we care a little bit too much. But it's, it's schoolyard politic tactics and it's, it's almost like if you shout the word cooties, everybody is going to run away and that's what they're trying to do with the label of far right. They're going to slap us with the cooties label and they're going to and run away and discourage people from associating with us and voting no. And I actually think, uh, James, it's actually dangerous for Labor in particular. I mean, if it, they're going to lose this referendum and if you're a patriot, whatever side of the debate you are on, you want Australia, Australia to heal on October 15 and after that, yeah. right? You do not want to make it worse. But by portraying this, uh, the no campaigners who will win as racist and infiltrated by the far right and very nasty, and then they win, uh, absolutely smears our reputation to the world, quite unfairly, I think. I think there's very sane, sensible reasons for voting no, and will set off a, an, an uh, you know, a sort of, a campaign of resentment and hatred by the losers that I think is really going to serve us badly. 
Yeah, if the referendum fails, which, as you said, it looks like it will, we will learn a lot about uh, particular people after October 14. We'll learn a lot about Anthony Albanese and what kind of politician he is, whether he can unite the country after having overseen such division. And we'll learn a lot about particular activists who keep saying they're all about reconciliation. Well, we'll see if they don't get their way on October 14, just how much reconciliation does matter to them or whether it really was just all about power. So we'll learn a lot if this referendum fails. I think it's a moment of truth for many Labor politicians. Do you want to defend Australia or just defend Labor? Uh, if you defend Labor, you'll say you'll smear everyone else. If you want to defend Australia at the end of it, make it heal, come together, then you're going to say, well, look, the public has chosen and we submit to the public's will. They mm. may, you know, don't get it wrong.